The Origin of Galahan Prologue The new era all began with a terrible and bloody battle. The person who was the cause of this long bloody battle was a malevolent king. His forefather had named him Urlok. Urlok ruled over a chain of islands with a massive army that he commanded with ease and absolute power. He was a massive man with dark forest green chiseled skin, deep crimson hair that was slicked back and ran low down his back. It was late as he stood in silence. His dark blue eyes were transfixed on a particular island far into the distant, but still within seeing range. It was the island of Windfall, which was ruled by his twin brother, an elven king named Saigon. The reason for Urlok's rage towards his brother was that Saigon refused to hand over his throne to his brother. Even though Urlok was, in fact, of royal blood and was the rightful heir to the throne of Windfall, though Saigon was within reason for withstanding his brother's advances for the throne. Saigon could see the evil that dwelt within his brother's heart. When Saigon refused Urlok's ascension to the throne without any hesitation, Urlok became enraged with his brother's actions and betrayal. He declared war on Windfall. Though during this time of tragedy and horror, life goes on and a child had been born. Per the usual, the father of the child was overjoyed when he was blessed with a healthy and strong son. The father could not allow his child to be raised in this time of war. Take our child and go, said the father. But where, where will we go? I do not know. Somewhere far away from this place, I will not allow my child to be raised during the warfare. I must stay. But why, why you? The mother sobbed. I have to. I'm the general of this army, and I will lead the king's army to victory. Please come with us. I can't. It's not fair for our son to be raised without a father, the mother said, still sobbing. The father placed his hand on her cheek and wiped a tear. I know, but I have to do this. It will be an honor to fight not just for Windfall, but for my family as well. The mother looked into his face. The father kissed his wife goodbye. It was a passionate kiss, a sad moment for a mother to say goodbye to her husband. He rubbed his child's head one last time. Goodbye, my son, Galahan Darkos, a name he gave to his son, a name of a true hero, the name of the father, the perfect name for a son. The mother watched as her husband left, then the mother fled with baby Galahan in her loving arms. The mother had gone on horseback with the baby still in her arm. She put her one hand on the strap and rode off. Dark clouds, were f dark clouds were beginning to form in the sky. A loud clash of thunder filled the sky. It had begun to rain, heavy rain. The king's army marched towards the enemy as Galahan led the king's army into battle. The ground was muddy as the soldiers plunged their footprints in the muddy ground as they marched. The king's army had about five hundred soldiers, but the enemy outnumbered them with eight hundred, and so the great battle of Windfall had begun. All right, men, we fight for glory, and if we die, we will die for honor, shouted the general. Galahan had raised his sword above his head. Archers from the front of Saigon's army fired their arrows, some with fire burning on the tips of the arrowheads. A great number of Urlok's army were shot down, but they just kept coming. King Saigon's archers stood their ground while the rest rushed into combat, screaming out with their battle cries. King Urlok watched the battle from a cliff 
with a son of his own named Erlok, whose face resembles that of his father's. The two armies came at each other with swords, battle axes, and war hammers. The mother rode hard with the baby in her arm. As she rode, she was unaware that she was being chased by raiders on horses. She had soon made it to the shores. She quickly got off the horse and put the baby in the boat. As she was getting on the boat, one of the raiders grabbed her from behind. As she was struggling to get free, another came up to her with a dagger. As he plunged the dagger forward, she got free and the dagger stabbed the raider. Luckily, she never goes unarmed. She pulled out two hidden blades from her sleeves. The raider clashed his dagger against her blade, and she stabbed him with the other. The blood oozed out of his stomach. Another raider came to the boat and grabbed the baby. The mother swooped around and plunged a blade right through him, with the baby still in his hands. The mother put one of her blades away and swooped around him and grabbed the child. She pulled out the blade and puts it away as the raider's body fell to the ground. She saw that more raiders were coming, and she quickly got in the boat with the baby and shoved the boat offshore. They were safe. The mother had set her course for Crystal Rock, Windfall's sister island. At least on Crystal Rock, they will be safe. Three years of the war had passed, and King Erlok had finally come face to face with the general. General Darko stood his ground with sword and shield as Erlok put out a sword and mace ball. You must be General Darkos, the one leading my brother's army. I'm going to enjoy spilling your blood. The duel between the general and Erlok took place on the highest cliff in all of Windfall, in the rain. General Darkos charged at him with his sword. Erlok blocked the incoming swift of Darkos' blade. Erlok kicked him back and swung his mace down with massive force. Darkos jumped aside, away from the spiked ball. The mace was massive and heavy. It could break a shield in pieces. Darkos never dealt with the mace ball before. Erlok swung his mace again, and Darkos jumps back. Darkos charged in with his sword. As Erlok blocked it, Darkos gave him a good whack with his shield, which is made of steel. Then Darkos swiped his leg against Erlok's, causing him to fall down. Darkos threw down his blade with both hands. Erlok blocked it with his sword. As they were struggling their swords, Erlok kicked Darkos, causing him to fall back. Erlok got up quickly and threw his mace down. Darkos rolled aside from the incoming ball. Darkos ran towards him with, with sword in hand as Erlok swung his mace. The chain from the mace wrapped around Darkos' blade. Erlok pulled his mace back, taking Darkos' sword out of his hands. Erlok swung his mace. Darkos blocked the mace with his shield, but the impact of the mace knocked him down. Erlok walked over and grabbed Darkos by the neck. Without your sword, you're weaponless, said Erlok. I'll see you in hell. I don't think so, Erlok laughed. I'm staying right here where I belong, and I'm sending you to hell. You can tell the devil I said hi. Erlok took his sword and rammed it through his chest. Erlok walked to the edge of the cliff with Darkos' sword in his hand. He raised the sword above his head and threw it down the cliff. The blade plunged into the ground. Erlok may have won this battle. But he, he is nowhere near winning the war.